What's up guys, Tim Halstead here for episode 21 of building up the 408 Cleveland. So I'll kind of give you an update where I'm at. I got to throw a shout out to Mark at Bullet Cams and Bullet Cams for sponsoring me. Sending me some new valve springs and retainers and locks. Um, I was running some ISKI stuff, but it's, I, I, I want to say it's from 2011. And we looked at the cam, we talked about it, there might be a little bit of lift or movement on there that shouldn't be there, although it's not marked up, but the wear signs are there. I think I need more spring pressure. So I'm going with pack 1225s and then titanium retainers and locks. I'm checking out the lifters now. Now I've always used Crane Ultra Pro. I've used competition cams. I had some issues with them, with oiling. I don't know, I just didn't like the way that the lifters were set up into the bores. And I think it kind of, they lift it up and would lose a little pressure. But I went with the Ultra Pros, and since then I've never had any oiling problems with the lifters or really anything other than normal wear and tear with them. If these are good, we're gonna check them all up. I'm gonna throw them in there. I do have a set of Iski Red Zone with a roller bushing that I got from Ron Iskadarian. Actually in 2013, I was gonna put in this motor originally, but they had sent me Windsor lifters. And I had actually put them in and had these problems with the oil pressure. And I, I do got pictures of the oil pressure gauge. You get them to have pressure maybe 65, 70, and then as it started to warm up, it dropped right down and start fluctuating. So that's what I found out. And actually, I'll tell you who told me the problem was Mark McEwen. So MME, won't get into any more of that story. You're not gonna really benefit from it. Here's where I'm at. The cam I'm using, it's a bullet cam. And this is a, a regrind that I had made from my Dyno 2000 engine simulation program. I put the numbers in on a cam that I had previously changed stuff around and kind of told me this would be the best one so I sent him a cam that I had bought from someone it was a big old roller pro stock and I had it ground down to this which is 273 and 284 744 and 727 out of 109 and I put it in last it was in I think it was 107 we're gonna put the cam in now and degree it in and check and see where we're at and obviously we're gonna check the piston to valve clearance so I appreciate you tuning in, everybody that's been helping me along with this motor. Uh, again, shout out for Bullet Cams. Talk to Mark. If you got any questions, he's a, he's a Cleveland guy. He knows his Clevelands. And he actually knows A3 heads. He's raced with them before. Got a double pinned camshaft. I think that's important to have when you get high spring pressures. We're setting this up to be about two. 75 to 280 on the seat, about 750 to 765 on the nose. So, putting the cam in now, I got most of it in already. I'm using this T wrench to help balance it like a cam holder so I don't bang into the bearings, and it went in pretty easy. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. We're ready to put the thrust plate on for the camshaft. I want to thank Steve Kinzel for stopping by on one of my episodes. Kenzel Ventures Limited. I appreciate the coffee mug coming by and seeing me. That was great. I want to throw a shout out to Track Boss Performance Products. Thanks for helping me out. Also want to thank Bullet. Hopefully today when I get home from here, uh, my springs, retainers, locks, everything else will be there. That'd be nice. I get these heads set up. So we got the camshaft plate here. It's recessed or countersunk for these type with a bearing, the Torrington bearing. Make sure you got it square in there. So 
tight, but you know what? I know it ain't coming out of there. The cam's 109 degrees. I put it in at 107 intake center line. So two degrees advanced on here. That's where it was before. Now I'm gonna put the bolt in, but I'm not gonna lock tight. I'm gonna snug it down to make sure that the bearing is flush and the gear is seated. It's slid on real nice. And then, cause we're gonna degree this in to make sure that this is gonna be in the correct position that we want and check our piston to valve clearance. So let me show you this. Camera. Oh. So here's the Scott Cook Air Supremacy intake that I ran before on this combination. It's a bad intake, Scott Cook. So I had sent it to Morgan to get a little fine tuning when I'd sent some uh, AFD heads there. But here's the deal. Look at that. Now Scott Cook's talking about coming up with another <laughs> race type version, and he wants me to try it, and I'm ready, Scott. I got this here, probably this season. If I get a few runs in and it's running good, I'll switch the intakes and see if we pick up with it. I probably gained only about a mile an hour on this combo. The best was a 966 with this intake and a Dominator. With that other intake and a 4150, I had a 968. So like I said before, I'm just gonna snug this, this up. I'm not going to put Loctite on it in case I have to change something or do something. The key is not to forget about putting Loctite on there. But I like the way it draws in nice and neat. Remember if you're using a Windsor crank and a Cleveland, you got to have a special timing set or have a spacer. You could even make it if you wanted to out of a harmonic balancer on a lathe. But Ford Motorsport used to make it. I think I still have a couple of them that I've used before. But now with the timing gear made for it, you don't have to mess around with that spacer. You know, one thing I can tell you when you're putting stuff together, stuff should go together nice and easy. You shouldn't be squeezing things, banging things, hit them with a hammer. Although, I got some slack from Blake Livingston on when I was using a hammer to, to put pistons in or take them out or something or rock bolts or something. He's like, you know, use a rubber mallet or one of those hard phenolic type hammers. So we got that snug. We'll check and see how this turns around, rotates. I tell you, I gotta buy one of these crank sockets. They work great. So just thread the bolt in and go on that whole route. Nice. So we're degreeing the cam in now. So I have this dial indicator set up on the deck. I got zero degrees on it at top dead center. I got the degree wheel at zero degrees here to read this. And now what we're gonna do is go to max cam lift. Which is right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to back up past to 50 degrees and take a reading. And that's pretty good. That's about, it looks like about 58 and a half. So I'm going to write that down. And now we're going to go back 50 the other way. Now I got 152. So I'm going to write that down. So it looks like I got about 105.5 degrees. So I got the cam all degreed in, tiny chain bolt torqued down, and putting on the front cover now. I like to use the 3M weather strip adhesive on gaskets. 
I'm telling you, it's good stuff. It keeps things from moving around. It dries quick. It's tough to get off your fingers, I'll tell you that. But it centers well and dries well, and that's what I like. And then I cleaned up my front cover. New seal. Nice. I hope that'll stay there. I can put a bolt in just for temporary. And I just put a couple bolts in and tighten them for a little bit and let them sense that gas get down so flat, especially where the water pump holes are. So I had that covered on just to press the gasket on. I like to keep it tight so it dries nice. I got the timing cover gasket on. So I guess Billy Ray Morgan's coming out sometime. I'm not sure when, but I saw a message on Facebook I answered today. So I don't know where we're going to be, Billy Ray. Might be able to put this thing in like we took it out a year ago. Or thereabouts, I forgot the exact time frame. I, ch I can check the timing against the dampener, which I run an ATI Super Dampener. Great dampener. You know, stay away from that. The Rattler, I've heard those things are junk. Never had one. I've only used um, ATI. And I had another one that was a NASCAR one. I can't remember who they, who they are right now. BHJ, I had a dampener. Never sees on the dampener. Oil on it too, so it doesn't tear the seal when you go to put that on. I got the balancer on, actually it went on with a bolt without any issues. Didn't have to pound it on or anything. And then I'm going to torque it to, it's 75 to 90, I'm going to torque this to 90. And here's a little trick that Rody showed me, putting an extension inside the counterweight balance hole to stabilize it and hold it while you go to, when you go to torque it down. There it is, baby. This motor turns over so easy, it's crazy. You uh, But I want to thank everybody that's been helping me along. Hopefully you guys are tuning in to the YouTube channel. You know, Todd Fuchs and 351cleveland.net. Thanks guys, Darren Morgan, Precision Oil Pumps, now Bullet Cams. Thanks Market Bullet Cams for hooking me up with the valve train parts. I appreciate that. And someone had asked me on the YouTube channel about dynoing it, willing to pay for some of it. You know, I would love to do that, but I don't have the extra money to dump on a dyno, which is probably at least, last time I did it was probably about 500 bucks, give or take, plus the place I went to is in Columbus, that's three hours. It's actually in, uh, but that's over three hours away to load it up and go there and do that. I would love to just see what it does, but I probably won't do that this time around. My main goal is to get in the car, run it, and track what it's gonna do. So, Hope they got some insight on this, how I'm putting it together, and take from it what you want. Appreciate it. Subscribe and share.